Hi dear horse friends, I'm Josefa Guillaume, classical dressage trainer from Belgium, and I'm going to do a lecture on kissing spines. The reason I chose kissing spines, because in the last 20 years, as I have been rehabbing horses with all sorts of problems, but oftentimes kissing spines, it occurred to me that many people do not know how to treat kissing spines, even vets, or what the specific cause of it is. Before we are going into how to treat kissing spines or how to prevent it, we are going to take a deeper look into what kissing spines actually is. When you look at the horse, you see that the horse, like any other vertebrated animal, has a spine. And this spine has vertebrae. These vertebrae can move more apart from each other or closer together. When the vertebrae in the back of the horse touch, we call it kissing spines. But how do these vertebrae move apart or closer together? The answer to that lies in the posture and the movement of the horse. And oftentimes this posture and this movement is completely orchestrated by humans by trainers and by riders. Often trainers and people talk about riding the horse over the back. This is actually a good thing. The problem is though, that what people conceive as riding over the back actually really isn't. What you need to understand and remember from this lecture is that the horse needs to be in a, for him or her, natural position. A position the horse would travel in when the horse would be a natural or wild horse. Because nature would never have horses move in a way that would get them injured, because then they would not survive. So a natural position for the horse is a position in which the front legs are not fully loaded. The hind legs can be the engine and thrust the horse forward. And the important thing to remember is that when the shoulders are free and not loaded and the hind legs act as an engine, the trunk of the horse, so the complete rib cage, the chest, the withers, the abdomen and the long back muscles are going to rise up. This is often misunderstood and overlooked also by vets. A lot of horses have their trunk or their ribcage sunken down and their withers dropped. When this happens, the back of the horse will make a shape that is more hollow. When the back is more hollow, the vertebrae are more likely to touch. And when this happens, the vertebrae kiss and we have kissing spines. Now there are two possibilities. The, the spines, the vertebrae touch each other, but they can still move apart. This obviously takes time and you have to be able to change the posture and the movement of the horse. Or it has been for such a long time that the vertebrae touch that they fuse. And you can no longer move them apart and it has to be done by surgery or if the horse no longer has any pain from the fused vertebrae, you can leave it as is. I have to mention here that a part of mobility of the whole horse here has been lost and the horse should never be worked the same way it has been before. So that is a simple explanation of an in fact complicated problem. What makes it complicated is to prevent it and when it happens to help the horse overcome it. Now how can we diagnose kissing spines? The most simple way is to have your vet make some x-rays. Then you can see the back and you can see if the vertebrae are touching and how severe the problem already is. But there are also other symptoms. A horse can start to object to movement. 
the horse can start bucking, the horse can start spooking. There are all sorts of things, problems, objective behavior a horse can show in which he tries to tell you that he is in pain. Also look for the equine pain phase. This is a scientifically proven method to find out if horses are in pain because horses are prey animals and they try to hide the fact that they are in pain because pain and injury shows weakness and that makes them more attractive preys for predators. Let's go back to the part where we talk about horses posture and way of movement. Oftentimes it is said that the horse's back must come up. There are also people nowadays who say that the horse's back cannot come up. What they mean is, is that the spine cannot come up like it would, for instance, with a cat. This is true. But the back can come up. Not just the back, the whole rib cage of trunk and trunk of the horse can come up and should come up. Because that is the only way a horse will move in a natural and healthy way, which will preserve his locomotive system and his health. People have to understand this principle. Now, when we sit on top of the horse, the horse is inclined to drop his back, his whole rib cage, his withers, and so forth. And when that happens, all the weight of the rider and the horse will move towards the front legs. The horse will then not have the locomotive system that nature has enabled him with to move in a correct way and to be able to flee from predators, fight, mate, uh, express himself in the movement that the horse makes. So it is vital for the horse's health, mental health, as well as physical health to be able to, be able, sorry, to have good posture and to move correctly, correctly meaning in a natural way. Nature intended the horse to move in a certain way. To help the horses with, with this, there is this special ligament. This ligament is called the nuchal ligament. It starts at the pole and it goes over the withers and then it goes over into the next ligament that goes from the back to the tail. The nuchal ligament helps the horse to engage his back. With that, I mean that the long back muscles do the work they're supposed to do, which is help the horse move. On each side of the spine, there is a long back muscle. When you sit on your horse, best if you sit on the horse without saddle, you feel these long back muscles when the horse walks or trots or canters and you feel that they alternatively move. So one side of your buttocks goes up, the other goes down, and it goes like this. This long back muscle, the longissimus dorsi, is responsible to have the horse move as one. So it's an important muscle that the horse needs to make sure all the movement in his body moves as one and aligns the horse in a healthy posture. This is very important. Also, this long back muscle ensures that the vertebrae of the spine do not touch, even more so. When this muscle is activated, the vertebrae come further apart. The key to this is the movement of the horse, of the head, the neck, the shoulders, and the hindquarters. To engage this way of moving, the horse needs to stretch the neck forward, down and out. Many people know this part, but they forget a little bit. And that's this tiny part that makes all the difference. When the horse moves forward, we mean forward from the hind legs. The hind legs forward underneath the body of the horse. The engagement of the motor of the horse, the engine. When we say down, we mean that the neck of the horse drops forward. 
drops down a little bit. This doesn't mean that the neck needs to drop all the way down, but it needs to drop nevertheless. And the last part is the out. And this is what is always forgotten. The horse needs to put the nose out. Open the throat latch and point the nose forward. Why? Because then there will be the spool on the nuchal ligament that goes over uh, the withers and this will engage the back. This will open up and lift the withers and pull on the long back muscles. And with this, the vertebrae will open up. A lot of people will tell you that it is really bad for the horse to lower the neck because then the horse will only load the front legs. This is partly true. If the horse is only down and not forward, meaning that the horse only lowers the neck, doesn't go out, and the hind legs do not move underneath the body mass of the horse, working as the engine to move the horse forward, then indeed there will be no stretch in the back muscles, there will be no opening of the vertebrae and no uh, lifting of the withers and then the whole trunk will drop and indeed all the weight will go to the front legs. However, if you activate the hind legs and you encourage the horse to move forward, down and out, the shoulders will remain free because the engine is on the hindquarters. This means that for each horse is a little different how much the neck needs to drop. The better the horse is at this, and the more flexibility the horse has, how lower the neck can be. But to be forward, down and out, the neck doesn't have to be that low. It just needs to be low enough for the nuchal ligament to experience the tug that will help the widows come up and the vertebrae to move apart and the whole system of the horse to work as one. An easy way to see if the system is working or not is the rhythm of your horse. Especially in trot, you have to have, you have, to have a clear one-two rhythm. One-two, one-two, one-two. If that is not there and the front and back diagonal pairs do not work in the same way, not work as one, it means the long back muscles are not working, so the horse is bracing the back. When the horse braces the back muscles, so he keeps his back tight, that is when the whole trunk will drop and the vertebrae run risk of touching each other. When the vertebrae in the back have not fused yet, so they can still come apart on its own, it's crucial to start with this work, helping the horse to find the posture and the movement forward, down and out, on the lunge, in hand, and maybe later even on the saddle. It's crucial that you work on this and on the other gymnasium exercises and do never force a horse into an outline, especially if it goes behind the bit. The reason for this is that if the horse goes behind the bit, the horse automatically goes weighing the front legs. If the horse goes behind the bit, no matter if he looks like the neck is elongated and fully stretched, this system does not work. There'll be a strain on the nuchal ligament, but because the shoulders are loaded, the trunk will not be able to rise, the trunk will drop, the withers will come down, and the horse is still very much in danger of getting kissing spines or making it worse. You can see this with a lot of Grand Prix dressage horses, that their riders really have to fight to sit up straight so they hang a little bit backwards. The reason is, is that the horse is behind the vertical, which makes the withers drop 
And it's very difficult to sit straight on a horse when the withers go down. When the withers are up, you can easily sit correctly in a straight line on your horse. These are all tiny factors that needs to be considered because they make a world of difference. Another factor that is commonly overlooked or executed wrongly is the forward part. Forward does not mean speed. Many people think forward mean to chase the horse and more speedy way of going. Faster, faster, faster. This is not the case at all. Forward means that the hind legs move forward under the body. The speed, in fact, does not really matter. This can be done in walk, this can be done in trot, and this can be done in counter. Even more so, if you chase the horse in a higher speed, then he is able to balance himself. The horse will drop onto his forehand and use the muscles to not tumble over. This is exactly the system, the system that prevents the horse of not falling over, dropping on his nose and on his knees. If that system is engaged, the system that keeps the horse balanced and working over the back while the hindquarters are the engine does not work. It's the one or the other. So the system that works to prevent the horse from falling, tumbling over, or the system that makes the horse go from his hind legs over the back, free in the shoulders, into a long neck and an open front ledge. So chasing the horse over the speed in which he is able to balance himself also brings the, the horse on the forehand and also brings the horse in danger of getting kissing spines. And when the horse has kissing spines, it will only make it worse. So this is not something you should do. Another point to get the horse to engage the system in which he tries not to tumble over is when the head is fixed in some way. Uh, auxiliary reins, draw reins, or just a harsh hand of a rider fixing the horse's head. You see, horses, like humans and most animals, they have a sort of balancing act uh, organ between the ears, which is called the vestibular system. Your brain is making tiny calculations the whole time to help your body to stay up straight and not fall over. When you sit, while you stand, maybe not while you're laying down, for the horse this is the same thing. In order for the system to work, your head needs to be able to make its free movement. When the head gets restricted, your balance gets lost, it's the same way with humans. But it's even more so with horses, because they have four legs, they are able to stand, which is very important if you are a prey animal. But the movement, even though you are still on all fours, is not a movement you should be doing all day long or even for an hour, because your muscles, your muscular system will adjust to that way of moving and standing and you will get a different shape in your body. It's the same way with horses. It's important that the horses develop their muscles in a way that they're engaging from the hind legs over the back into the down and out uh, form or posture is dominant. This way the horse can always find easily his balance back and find his healthy, natural posture which prevents the horse from getting kissing spines or other illnesses of the movement apparatus. There are people who will tell you that their horse is naturally inclined to get kissing spines and it does nothing to do with their training. Partly true. There are horses that are naturally inclined to get kissing spines, yes. They have maybe a shorter back 
and the vertebrae are closer together as it is. Or sometimes horses are born with a form of kissing spines. This is possible. Nevertheless, even more so reason to train in a way that prevents or heals kissing spines. It is always the fault of the trainer and the rider if kissing spines gets more severe, even though it already is there naturally. But with most horses, it's not there at all. It's induced by means of wrong and harmful training. Make sure that you understand the system of the long back muscle, of the nuca ligament, of the dropping of the neck, of the forward down and out. Understand the difference between forward and speed. Understanding the difference between a stretch long neck and a drop neck. Understanding when the back is up. You can easily induce this with your own horse by standing next to your horse's rib cage. Put your fingers underneath his uh, chest and belly and then push it suddenly upwards. Your horse will do this and you will see the back come up. This can be painful for some horses or some horses can't even do it at all. There is where your horse has his problem and you need to fix it. You can fix that while the horse is standing. Teach him by means of a cavesson, not a halter. I will explain later why. Teach him to elongate the neck, so drop it a little. And move the throat latch open, so the nose out. Teach this on the cavesson, first in standing, later in walk, and later in trot. When you can do this, you can help your horse at all times to move into a healthy posture on the lunge. So why a cavesson and not a halter? Or maybe just attach the lunge to a bit? I'll tell you why. It is more biologically appropriate for a horse to have the lunge attached to a cavesson. Why? Because if the lunge is attached to the nose, the horse will be inclined to look inwards. If the lunge is attached to the bit, the horse will be more inclined to tilt the head. And when the lunge is attached to the halter, the horse will be more inclined to tilt or to put, because of the fascia, put the chin up. And when the chin goes up, the back goes down. So cavesson is an invaluable tool to help prevent or cure kissing spines. Now you know exactly what you have to learn to prevent kissing spines or to help kissing spines be cured if the vertebrae have not yet fused. What I have to mention with this is that this forward, out and down, this stretching on the lunge or in hand or maybe on the saddle is an exercise. Like going to the gym, you have all sorts of exercises that are good for all sorts of things. But you don't just do one exercise for one muscle group all the time that you are in the gym. Next to this exercise, which is but normal training, more of a warm up and a cooling down or a stretch, your horse needs to do all sorts of exercises. Like for instance, shoulder in and travers, laterals, uh, transitions, uh, backing. And maybe exercises like collector trot or pihoff. These are all exercises that the horse needs to have his muscular system support and align his skeleton and prevent health problems. So if you only ride or lunge or work in hand in the forward down and out position for half an hour each day, that will not help your horse. Maybe it will a bit in the beginning if you are trying to cure kissing spines. Then this is the best thing to do. But your horse also needs to develop all the other muscles in his body. And his flexibility laterally as well as in the hindquarters. The freeing of the shoulders and, and all kinds uh, of exercises he needs to do. 
So what I uh, told you today is a crucial part of fixing kissing spines, but it is only a part of the whole training of the horse that is needed to keep the horse healthy, happy, empowered, flexible for years to come, at least up to 30 years of age. And third, make sure you learn about all the other gymnasium exercises that complete the full and healthy training of the horse. If you would like to know more about this, I've written a 346 pages book precisely about that, which helps you step for step to either rehab your horse or keep your horse completely healthy up to high age. Whether you have a foal or a senior horse, a horse with kissing spines or any other health problem, or a horse has been to trauma, very traumatized, a fearful horse, an aggressive horse, it doesn't matter. I have so much experience in all these things for the last 20 years and I was able to fix them and I share all this information with you in that book and everybody is able to follow it and help their horses become happy and healthy. Of course, in a 30 minute lecture, it is impossible to completely explain and teach how to prevent or cure kissing spines, but I hope to have given you the information you need to research further and find out how to help your horse and how to prevent it in the future. I thank you very much for kindly joining me and following my lecture. And I hope that you will uh, read my book because this will be very helpful. And if you need more inf information, just go to my website, dressageinhand.com and drop me an email. Thank you so much. Have a great day and enjoy all the other trainers that are sharing here today.